like coming here for a couple of things. I think if I'm having a down day and I want to just buy a cocktail and sit by the window, it, it's it's really uplifting because basically you're getting a bird's eye view of the entire city. It's so good. So good. And they do something called AFC, Atmosphere Fried Chicken. I mean, how unpretentious is that? I would really like to have a cocktail and some fried chicken. Yes, please. For decades, Simone Hang has been entertaining audiences across the globe, presenting and creating content for some of the biggest names in TV and radio. Face of HBO Asia, broadcast of 300 million subscribers. Face of Virgin Radio Dubai with a number one rating show. Channel 9 Australia, nominated four years in a row as Personality of the Year in the Best in Dubai Awards. Brand endorser for Dove Hair Arabia, Ponce Arabia and Sunso Philippines. Now, Simone Hang is coming your way. Interviews with Gerard Butler, Lewis Hamilton. I, I just seen a big picture of me on in this shop. I... It's a hot picture, Lewis. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We're all looking at the picture. <laughs> There's lots of airbrushing going on. So. Nicole Scherzinger, Naomi Campbell, Adriana Lima. <laughs> Juliana Rancic. Patricia Field. I want to buy Mr. Big online. Can I find my Mr. Big on there? Because I'm in need, really bad. If anyone can get him for you, honey, it's me. <laughs> Chloe Kardashian. Just hold on, we're going home. I love this so much. Danny Minogue. <laughs> Omar Sharif. I read online that you actually had some talks with George Bush about the Middle East. What was that like? Well, I, I told him that not to put his feet in Iraq. Give me a sec. Don't drive up yet. Oh! So many of Bur Dubai's great attractions are along the creek. So to see as many of them as I can, I'm going to take an Abra. fun ways to enjoy Hatta. But if you truly want a one-of-a-kind experience to exploring the neighbourhood, <laughs> then head on over to the Hatta Fort Hotel. But not only are we showing Asian designers that are, that are setting the pace, um, we're also showing them in a platform that is setting the pace. The category right now is Samoa's leading hotel and the award goes to... TV and radio presenter Simone Heng joins us. You are a huge inspiration. You're one of the key speakers and uh, I've been very blessed that a lot of the external endorsements I do beyond the radio have come on board to donate prizes. I've been a TV and radio presenter now for almost a decade. You should have been down. I can't believe this is 15 minutes in the cab. I give up. <laughs> Hi guys, thank you so much for sitting through three and a half minutes of pure ego, but I think that kind of <laughs> foregrounds uh, for you why I deserve to be up here talking to you about this, um, because I've had a foot in the old media as well as new media, so it's a very interesting time uh, for everyone in my industry at the moment, because there's a massive shift where those people who are not getting on board with new media are, are really quickly being left behind. So. From what you've seen, my previous incarnation uh, of, of my career was based in Dubai, Singapore, um, and also a bit of work here in Australia as a TV and radio presenter, old media, traditional media. Um, I also have a DIY blog, which is not shown in there, but I, I basically show women how they can acquire mm -hmm. high fashion looks by making it themselves. So if you imagine like, you know, craft on steroids, that's a little bit of what I do. And um, most of the things that I've learned about social media are actually through doing that blog. Um, and the URL to that is dynamicstyle.com. If any of you are starving students and want the latest looks from Paris Fashion Week, go to dynamicstyle.com. Um, and also, as was shown in the reel, I've been a commercial model for a long time and, and an MC. I must be the world's shortest uh, person to ever be on a billboard. So that's, <laughs> that's a nice achievement to have. Um, so we're talking today about using social media marketing. And you know, the question arises, why is it vital? Um, in terms of business and in terms of personal branding and, and business brands, the answer for me is about leverage. Um, it, it can help you get a foot in the door if you're wanting to go into the fashion media industry. This is my business partner. She's not. She's in Melbourne today as her day job as a Chadwick model manager, but um, she's my business partner, so that's why this is up there. Um, I probably should mention Savvy Ventures is a business that I've run, seeing as you're all... How many of you here are 
budding uh, entrepreneurs. Okay, so I think everyone's understood, uh, although university, fantastic place to learn skills, not so much generally about how to um, actually go out and get jobs in the industry. So this is what we do for our two very competitive industries, fashion media. We show people how to get an in. We also do skill setting, but the majority of our business that's really taken off is, is actually telling particular people based on their circumstances how to get into the industry. Um, so social media marketing in terms of the DIY blog that I do, Savvy Ventures and my personal broadcasting career has given me so much leverage. Um, when I was in Dubai and I was making the decision to come back to Australia because my mum had a stroke, um, I actually started, I had been kind of spamming my Facebook with the things that I'd been doing, like you saw on that reel, for quite a while because I knew a lot of people from the Singaporean industry kind of followed me and were keeping up to date. And as a result, when mum had the stroke and I moved back here, I'm still able to get bookings through an agent in Singapore because I had done that social media groundwork, even though I haven't lived in Singapore since 2008. So I think for any business or any person trying to sell anything, whether that's yourself um, or your startup, it's about the leverage that it gives you. It, it becomes like an online portfolio. It's a web that advertises all of your skills the things that you can do in an extremely creative way that traditional media can't showcase. Traditional media often seems to kind of sell, sell to us, very direct. Um, so social media is definitely something that you need to have in your arsenal. Um, and one thing that became very interesting to me when I joined Mix 94.5 last year is that, you know, I had my personal Twitter followers were more than the entire station. Australia, compared to Asia, for example, is definitely behind as far as its use of social media and you, we need to get on it. The other, other countries are just leaving us behind and it is a global medium. So don't fall behind. Um, it's something that you could be doing now while you're even studying and I'm going to tell you how you can do that. So talking about different social media mediums, who here uses Facebook? Okay, who here uses Instagram? Okay, Flickr? Tumblr, Twitter. Okay, so I'm of the Facebook generation. That means that I'm 31. So around the time that I um, started doing well in my career, Facebook was like the medium. We're talking 2007, 2008, before the social network movie came out. Everyone was up on the Facebook. Facebook has altered its algorithm. Has anyone else? Has anyone here got a public Facebook page? Has who here has seen the movie The Social Network? Okay, in the movie, there's a big argument between Eduardo Saverin, who, by the way, my friend dated. How funny is that? He lives in Singapore now. That's a sideline, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so Eduardo Saverin and Mark Zuckerberg have an argument about when to advertise on Facebook, and Mark Zuckerberg says, you know, it's just becoming cool yet. We don't even know what it is. It's too early to start spamming people with advertising. So all these years on, they've started exactly what Eduardo Saverin was trying to push in the movie. They've changed the algorithm, which basically means the people who post at high frequency, like what I did, Facebook knows who you are, and it now decreases the amount of people that can see those posts, and it's forcing businesses um, who are now very dependent on their Facebook to purchase posts. So mm -hmm. I just did a DIY workshop on the weekend with Westfield. In order for them to get viewership of the post advertising those workshops, they had to invest $150 which for them, for a marketing activation that doesn't really yield them an income, is a pretty steep investment to get 8,000 people to see that and to get 60 people to come and do craft. So it's changing, and I think it's going to be the demise of Facebook. So just to clarify, if you post at high frequency on Facebook, you're going to get seen by more people, is that right? The opposite. Okay. The opposite. So you're going to... So what they did was they got people who were interacting a lot, they got your trust, they sucked you in, um, and I would say this is around like 2011, 2010, 2011, and now they've started to de-optimise for those, those people. Um, in, on Instagram, who here is Instagram and Facebook? So, do you guys notice that some people who, or some businesses, who have heaps and heaps and heaps of followers and fans on Instagram um, don't have nearly as many on Facebook? Have you ever thought about why that might be? Purchasing. Purchasing likes and purchasing followers? No, it's more to do with the interface. So I look at Instagram as if it's like a visual Twitter. It's very feed based, it's very mobile phone based. So 
it's less irritable to people because while you sleep, you're not getting constant notifications, you're not getting um, constant traffic through. You can follow lots of people, but it doesn't really impinge or annoy you. Whereas Facebook's a little bit more annoying, I would say, for users. It gives you a lot more, oh, stop telling me, stop telling me that this is happening and this is happening. Like, I don't want to know about it unless I'm interested. So Instagram allows the user to go, all right, I'm interested in what Lara Bingle's doing with her hair today. I can go to Lara Bingle and have a look, but Lara Bingle is not spamming or annoying me. So that's my theory. That's my personal theory. These opinions are my own as to why there seems to be the same blogger can have a hundred times more following on Instagram than she does on Facebook. <coughs> it's also to do with how visual Instagram is, and we'll get onto that later. Um, Flickr, the FR uh, logo, you can see that it's an online photo sharing management system. Many international bloggers use it. It just helps them to keep track of their content. Tumblr, who uses Tumblr? If you Google the Tumblr story, it's an amazing entrepreneurial story. The guy's 28 years old, sold it for $1.5 billion to Yahoo recently. Um, it's a micro-blogging platform, and I actually think that this is the way that uh, blogging is actually going to go. I think there's going to be a decline in traditional blogging from someone who blogs and follows a lot of blogs, because everyone has a blog now. Who here has a blog? You're starting full time, I don't blame you. But if you're my gen, you'd all have a blog. Um, so what's happening with traditional blogging is that every second person now has a blog, which means there's so much more content. And there's a lot of trash, but there's also a lot of really interesting content out there because there's blogging courses and people are learning to do it better. And so that means it becomes even more confusing for people who are following blogs and content to, to ingest the huge turnover of stuff. So what Tumblr does, using a dashboard similar, similar, similar to Pinterest, a dashboard kind of interface, you can actually put like little micro blogs of the blogs that you follow and it will prompt you. So if you're someone who follows a lot of blogs, that might be the way to go. Twitter is interesting. Um, I don't really pay much attention to my Twitter. I link it to my Instagram. I'm a very visual person. I don't even know how I got into radio because I'm all about looking at stuff. So um, Twitter is interesting because a few friends of mine who are sportscasters for Fox Sports, they will have a much bigger Twitter follower, uh, Twitter following than they will the other mediums. And I think that's because men like Twitter because you can get your sports scores, you can get your simple funny jokes, but there's not a lot, of, a lot of photos and pretty pictures involved. It's not really an aesthetic thing. It's more written and to feed. So um, that's my theory. Pinterest, anyone use Pinterest? Yeah, Pinterest is great for um, creatives, for people like me, DIYers, lots of great ways to pinboard um, you know, pinboard blogs. For me, I think it, I, I use a lot of, I, I paint as well, so I use a lot of the Pinterest images as inspiration photos for paintings, and that way I don't have hard copy paper lying around. If I see something on the internet I want to paint, I can just pin it, come back to it later and print it if I decide to paint it. So I think it, it just gets rid of the traditional pinboard. Poor Kiki K is going out of business now. All right, next slide. Oh, is that all clear, guys? I'm trying not to hold you for too long. I'm speaking quite quickly. Okay, ethical social media marketing plus your social media self. Thank you, Susan, for doing this beautiful slide. Um, so how do you want to portray yourself, the social media etiquette and social media ethics? So personal branding is what we specialize in at Savvy Ventures, but a lot of what we do branding-wise can be extrapolated for people who are entrepreneurs running their startups. My number one rule is what you omit is just as important as what you post. So omitting your drunk images for me particularly, I lived in the Muslim world, so I don't put photos of me in bikinis, I don't put photos of me drunk up on there because there are people who follow me. I, I actually, and you laugh at this, but I, I was given a like a free underwear from like an underwear company and I, I just held it. I was fully clothed and I held it in a photo just to say thank you to the company. And two Muslim men um, unfollowed me and actually one of them wrote to me on my public Facebook to tell me why, because of this photo, I have decided to unfollow you. So. It's not a joke. It is, um, it is now, like the internet is not written in pencil that you can rub out. It is considered, um, you know, things get cached. It's all there. So I would be very careful about what you um, post. I don't do rants. Who here rants on their Facebook? <laughs> for, those of you, for those of you looking to, if, if, who, who's here is like, I kind of want to be an entrepreneur. I kind of might want to work for someone else. I'm, I'm sitting on the fence. Is there anyone here like that? Okay, for those people who may one day work for another company, stop ranting on social media. Nobody wants to hire a Debbie Downer. I know I don't. 
I don't want to hire someone who complains all the time and probably slag my company off. So I'm sure you've been told all of this before, but if I was you, I would just hold back and not be posting um, your rants. Okay. Um, more on social media etiquette in the, in the next thing where we use some examples. All right. Are you going to do them on, you want to do them on my one? Okay. Yeah. Um, Perfectus is looking forward to our Innovation Hub launch. Is there anything wrong with that? This is, yeah. Anyone got an issue? Is this a bad or good? It's not the most creative thing in the world, this is correct. But there's nothing essentially wrong with it, right? Okay, the next one. Our Innovation Hub launch is going to be the biggest and best launch ever! Yeah? I'm leaving the songs, but like... <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why I disagree. I disagree. I think when you're writing stuff, you've got to sell yourself big. Like, you've got to sell yourself bigger. So, um, okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That no one has been offended. No one has been slagged off. Um, okay, next. Our Innovation Hub launch party is going to be better than uh, so-and-so's launch over in Trinity House. They didn't even have enough whiskey. Minions. All right, what's wrong with uh, that? It's obviously, that's not cool, guys. It's venting. Sorry? Sorry? It's venting your anger. Yeah, it is. It is a bit venting. Like, if I read that, I was like, there's an issue there. Borderline slander. Um, yeah, borderline libel, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, no, I don't think it's that bad. I just think it is not selling your brand. If I saw that, I'd say that person has issues, right? Would you not? Given some publicity to XYZ, I guess it's Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're drawing attention to the fact that they might have a rival institution like Perfectus, a rival organisation. Um, and people might not know about XYZ at all in the first place. So then you kind of just draw attention to them. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're at mentioning them, you could end up with like a back and forth war situation, which is ugly. Okay, the next one. I work for Perfectus, but this is my personal opinion. Now, I just want to flag this. If you have a look at a lot of the um, made, like a lot of journalists who work for major news organisations in Australia, you'll see that they, a lot of them have on their personal Twitter accounts, the views are my own and not the opinion of the companies I work for. Because Australia, there's a lot of, I mean, compared to when I was working in Dubai, there isn't really, um, I mean, you could probably lose your job in Dubai, you're very disposable, but the organisation itself um, would not be taken under legal action with you as a representative, whereas Australia is a lot more regimented, there's a lot more laws, so um, I think that this is a good thing to have, depending on if you're going to say something controversial, but, okay, so she sticked it, so no one needs to answer. Okay, great. Um, next, number five. Perfectus thinks Tony Abbott is a douchebag for introducing the new labour reform laws. What's wrong with that? Like alienating some of your user base potentially? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so it's just not appropriate to share your political, religious views in terms of your business, I don't think. Unless your business is church or your business is Islam or whatever your business is. But I, I just don't think that, that that, in my personal view, um, from a business account is appropriate. And you also your personal accounts, if you've got on your, like I have on my personal Instagram, Simone Heng, co-founder of Savvy Ventures, I'm also, like even my business partner has pulled me up sometimes and like being careful what I post. So I think err on the side of caution, okay? Even if it's from your personal account. Here is um, my personal, <laughs> just, um, Here's also my personal test for the appropriateness of your post or your status. Ask yourself, would you wear the statement on a t-shirt? Like, would I wear the statement, interests, my interests include perfectors and drunk driving? Would I wear that on a t-shirt? No. I wouldn't wear the word douchebag on a t-shirt, so I probably shouldn't post it. Because it's as identifiable to you as wearing that t-shirt. Your head or your name and your contact details are attached to that status. So err on the side of caution. Obviously, interests include perfectus and drunk driving. What's wrong with that, guys? You're showing your interest as an illegal activity. That's like saying, hi, my interest is perfectus and raping young boys. It's just not appropriate. Like, it is just as much an illegal activity as drunk driving. Yes? Yeah, just on that point, like you said, drunk driving in jest, like that's a joke. Um, 
you know, some people, like, you might think that's a joke at the time, but, like, other people reading it back, uh, obviously, get, you know, that might get misconstrued, so you need to look at that that's going to be sort of right. Cool, so it goes back to what you said before about being anti-Islamic, the connections with alcohol. How do you mean in terms of this? Drunk driving, you know, out relates to alcohol. Yeah, but we're not. I, I only meant that in reference to I was living in a in a Muslim okay, country. Yeah. We're, you know, but, but social media is global, so yeah, if you have followers there, you know, they'll, exactly. They'll lose exactly. Well, I wouldn't write this, but if Perfectus wrote this, um, all right. Slide six, Instagram. Okay. Here is a little bit of a stats view about Instagram. 65% of Instagrammers are women, so it's a very female-led uh, medium. Why do you think that would be? Selfies. <laughs> uh, yeah. Selfies. What you were saying before about Twitter is that men are less visual than women. Is that what? I look. I believe from who I follow on Instagram that it is extru it's, it's all about aesthetics and it's all about beautiful pictures. And I don't know many men who sit there and get excited about pretty pictures, you know, like at the, to the point that women do. Women get really excited about it. So um, that's my theory. And 73% of Instagram users are aged 15 to 35, so it's very young. So you're talking about the people over 35, they're the Facebook users, I would say. Um, now here is the number one thing you need to write down if you have a piece of pen and paper or a laptop. The more content a user uploads onto Instagram, the more engagement with their publications decreases. So, we extrapolate from that statement that Instagram is about quality, not quantity. Okay, so the most successful Instagram users only post once a day. Yeah. Only. <laughs> only once a day. That's, that's hard. Like, if you, once you're in on Instagram, that's hard to bite back to once a day. Um, so, you, to try and acquaint yourself with Instagram for business, um, I would immediately start to follow businesses that are in line with your businesses or of interest. Even if you're planning a business, say, six months from now, you can be building your following by starting to follow um, photos that will appeal to people who like what your business is about. Um, you can design some hashtags. This can be done to make people laugh as well, but I would also, you know, you can do some, like, hashtag... Worst hair day ever today in reference to a photo of you with no hair. You know, you can do things that are comical, but I would also hashtag in hairdresser, hashtag world's greatest shave, or whatever, into that. So you can have those joking hashtags. I would also suggest two to six serious hashtags as well. How you can get followers and likes. Okay, um, you can interact with people you love and at mention their names in your comments. I would use images from brands that are aligned with your business and at mention them in the tag in the post. This will draw their attention to you and you might even get a regram from them. So I'm doing at the moment an exhibition of 10 paintings of Chanel bottles and I paint them. So when I post photos of these on Instagram, I will write at Chanel official number five bottle painting in the hope it's a long shot that Chanel might regram it. But that's just an example for you of if you're using anything that you could find a tie up in. Um, and if somebody who's really got a lot of followers regrants you, you will earn a lot of followers from that. Um, if you don't know the source of an image, use Google Image Search. So that's a big thing about the etiquette. Make sure that you um, always reference and credit photos. To push your brand on Instagram, you need to curate your photo stream to reflect the feeling your business is all about. So I'll give you an example. Savvy Ventures, it's about female entrepreneurship. Um, it's about... Um, the media and the fashion industry. So I would alternate pictures from um, photos that are high fashion images and then the next post might be a meme about, um, you, know, uh, you know, the dream is free but the hustle is hard work or something like that. So interspersing the content, but cumulatively it breathes the brand DNA. It breathes life into the brand DNA. So someone will be able to glance, most users glance only at the top six posts of your Instagram feed and they should be able to read that brand DNA from just looking at those top six posts. Is that clear? Does that make sense? I feel like my mother up here. Um, so yeah, make sure you tag those brands. Now the power of apps, I get onto this later. 
kind of gone... Yeah, I've, I've got more information on this coming up with exact apps and stuff for you. Will they get a copy of this, huh? Yeah, yeah, can yeah. do, yeah. Okay, great. All right. So, I think that this um, slide that uh, Susan did was really, really appropriate. Expose something new. So, Instagram gives people sneak peek value. Um, it used to all be about being instant Instagram, but now people are spending up to an hour. I've got a girlfriend who's a really successful blogger here, a minute away from Snowy. She spends an hour per image um, air, airbrushing it, making it beautiful before it goes up. So it's less being instant, but when Instagram first came out, um, I'll give you an example. Beyonce would post a photo behind the scenes at her film clip, and the Daily Mail would follow Beyonce. And the Daily Mail would do a full article on what Beyonce is wearing in this behind the scenes photo of the video clip which is yet to be released. So what that's offering Beyonce's followers is an insight into exclusive content before anyone else. So that even before the Daily Mail can report on it, the girl in her office has gone to her girlfriend, oh my god, Beyonce's done this, I've seen it. So you've got to incentivize as a startup the content that goes out to your followers you have to incentivize them by giving them something that's essentially special and um, exclusive. So who doesn't, you know, everyone loves, everyone loves to feel like they're exclusive. Um, but Beyonce also benefits, and so will your business, because she's selling her brand and a product in a creative way. She's selling her video clip in a really creative way. She's selling the Dolce & Gabbana corset that has been made for her in a really, really interesting way. So it's all about being creative and, again, exposing something new. Okay, I have a different post here. Oh yeah, no I don't. Instagram posting practice. Like I mentioned to you, you've got to create, um, you've got to curate and design your feed aesthetically to sell your brand DNA. It's really important. Quality, not quantity. Post once a day, not less than once a day, not more than once a day, if preferable. Peak interactions, 8 to 9 p.m., I've been told. Also, this says something a little bit different, but I, from what I've been told in another Instagram thing, 8 to 9 p.m., is um, peak interaction time. But these are also other times that you should take a look at, and they do make a difference. Throwback Thursday, which was today. I have my Throwback Thursday post. I put up a ma my first magazine cover that was 10 years ago, um, and so people seem to like that. Um, and people interact the most on Sundays, obviously, because they're not at work, or in the Muslim world, they would be at work and hitting their desk, so maybe that doesn't quite apply. But um, in the Western world, Sundays. Okay. All right, so people don't like to be sold to anymore. Young, the young generation, your gen, gen Y, are you gen Y? You're gen Y. Gen Y don't want to be directly sold anymore. It's not like my mum's generation who are like, come on, mutual blend me, tell me, <laughs> tell me what you want. Um, tell me what you want me to think. People don't want that anymore. So it's getting harder and harder for big companies to hire people who are marketeers who can do traditional media and also straddle new media um, and not all companies hire the right people. You're in a really lucky position as entrepreneurs because if you wrap your head around this, um, you can actually end up having more followers than an established company. So they, yeah, so I'll tell you, I'll give you an example of selling um, Savvy Ventures in an indirect way. The very first post I ever did on Savvy Ventures was about a story, um, does everyone know who Erin O'Connor is? She's a supermodel. She's an aging supermodel. And Erin O'Connor made a very famous comment in a supermodel documentary that when, at the height of her career, when they were flying all the models first class to different engagements, because she came from this working class Irish family in London, she just didn't believe in spending that amount of exorbitant cash. So she would get the ticket, go to the check-in counter, trade her ticket for an economy one, and save the rest of the money. And with that money, she bought her first property in London. So that was the story that I told, but that whole story is Savvy Ventures DNA. It's everything that we believe in telling women. Just because you are in a vacuous line of work does not mean you have to be vacuous. And just because you're doing something glamorous doesn't mean you can't actually think about making money through it. And so that whole story perfectly sold the brand DNA while at the same time being creative content. It was an interesting story. Did you not think it was interesting? Now you'll be like, oh my God, I saw Erin O'Connor on the Daily Mail. That's that chick Simone told me about. She's a smart cookie. So there you go. Um, so that's a really good example. So in terms of your businesses, think of creative ways to sell your brand DNA 
with your posts. Um, who here is really good at aesthetics? I know Susan is, but who here knows how to look at a picture and go, oh my gosh, the combination of purple and yellow in that picture is so pleasing to my eye because they're complementary colours. And look at the composition. Is anyone here arty like that? You are. Great. For those of you who don't have those skills, for Instagram, you need to train yourself to have those skills. So the best way to do that, I would say, is look at magazines, photographic books and blogs. You can study colour theory. I'm sure there are loads of blogs on the internet about it. Um, and you can use that kind of sense to train your eye so that you can put big, beautiful pictures on your Instagram because that's what Instagram is all about. Um, I think number two is really great. My brother-in-law asked me to help with the social media for his dental clinic. And the first thing I said to him, I was like, why don't you have any videos or um, headshots of your dentist? Because people are petrified of the dentist. They want to see a beautiful, smiling person who's going to be inside their mouth. <laughs> I didn't mean that to sound like me. <laughs> um, but you know what I mean. So um, that's one of the first things he did. He was put a photo of himself as a dentist up on the internet. So um, I think that's really good. Showcase the human face of your business. Um, Tanya and I do that very well. Our business is also about aesthetics, so it, it, it works. Um, Kickstart your efforts with a change in perspective. Successful brands on Instagram need to get past their inherent interest in selling. So that's a little bit of what I said to you earlier. If you've got a pen and paper, here are the apps that you are going to need to make your Instagram gorgeous. All right, Icono Square. It dis uh, dissects your Instagram accounts, gives you analytical information. Uh, square Ready. Uh, this can help you fit your non-square content into a square shape. Um, my favourite one of all, I get very excited about Snapseed. Snapseed not only allows you to brighten without, you know when you use filters on Instagram, they kind of tint your photo. Snapseed you can brighten without it tintering, yellowing or changing the colour temperature. Um, and at the same time you can select darker parts of the photo. Um, so if I was in a photo and half of me was in shadow on Snapseed, I can touch the dark side of my face and lighten it while keeping the other side the same colour. Um, and VS Co allows you to do all the things really Snapseed does, but one special extra feature is that it can sharpen images. So if you get something that's a little bit blurry and you're like, oh God, I'm on the run, I've got to go somewhere, you can post it later, but you can play around with it. Alrighty. Oh, hold on, sorry, just back, anyway. There was, yeah, balance fun images and quotes. Uh, Tanya owns another business called Infamous, um, Infamous Friends. Um, you can follow them at, at Infamous Friends Label, and they're a t-shirt company. And if you have a look at their feed, um, Tanya's husband does it so that one image is a high fashion image and the next image will be a meme and then the image after that might be the shirts but when you look at the feed the way it's curated is that it's always alternating between um, an image and a quote an image and a quote image and a quote and it looks really cool it's done in monochrome really nice so you can be creative particularly is anyone here selling anything that's really aesthetically driven clothing shoes no well, if you have any food, anyone here food? Going to go into food? Yeah. So you could do a meme one day about healthy eating or a detox plan. Like, hey, it's detox day one. Have you thought about it? And then the next day, you can actually have a photo of a beautiful, healthy dish, for example. So that's a creative way to sell your brand. All right, next slide. How are we doing for time? It's okay. It's okay. Are you guys bored? Do you need to get up and shake it? It's um, okay. very interesting. I'm so hardcore about it. I talk about it like it's life or death. <laughs> um, best practice on Instagram. I think this is really in interesting, and I really thank you for putting this in there because otherwise I've totally forgotten. As you can see, Samsung ran a, ran a contest to win a camera, I think, and used the hashtag. Has anyone used the hashtag function on Instagram? I don't actually use it as a user, but I think as a brand owner or a business owner, it's really, really great because with it, you can get free, beautifully done content about your brand without you having to sit there and take the photos. As long as you do the hashtag regram and at mention the person who created that content in the post, there's no reason why you can't post it. So for example, if you're a guy and you're like, I hate nothing more than doing a selfie of myself. I hate nothing more than taking a photo of my meal to sell my food business. Well, you run it out and you say, here's a free $500 voucher to my, my restaurant. All you have to do is take a photo of um, your favourite moment in my restaurant and hashtag it with favourite moment 
the name of the restaurant. And that way, when the competition closes, you can just press the hashtag, you have all the posts, screenshot them, and you can rebrand them, and it's content done for you that is all about your brand identity. Um, and a lot of major brands do this. And as a, as a startup entrepreneur where you don't have that much time, I think it's a brilliant, brilliant way to do things because you don't have to be photographing stuff. You're literally sitting there running your marketing in your hand. Like it's, It really is amazing. I wish it was around uh, 10 years ago. I used to run competitions on Facebook, which were a lot harder to track. Um, people have to comment and stuff like that. and it, It's a lot easier with the hashtag function. So it, is anyone unclear about that? That's clear? Great. I do believe we have... Um, do we not have now a workshop thing? Um, oh, this explains yeah, it. Yeah, that's the next slide. Yeah. Sorry, the thing you sent me the last one was slide turn. So um, this is a surprise to me, whatever comes next, guys. Oh, yes, I remember this one. So this is all pretty self-explanatory, using the hashtag function properly. Um, anyone here use hashtags a lot? You, you do use it? What do you use it for? Um, for instance, I was, I'm really into like uh, retro motorbikes, so um, I used to have few motorbikes myself, so if I take a photo and post with the hashtag to a company, they also rebrand it. Sort of yeah, exactly. So that's brilliant. So I think hashtags are good in building community and building awareness. And when you're starting out, if you, um, for example, girls who want to grow their blogs would hashtag other major bloggers if they've taken a photo which kind of might resemble Gary Pepper Girl. Uh, for, for me, for example, I got my hair cut, I'd be like, at Miss Lara Bingle Bob. At, you know, you, then you, you part of and you can hashtag Lara Bingle Bob. And every time other girls look for inspiration photos to get that, your account comes up. Maybe they find something interesting about your account, plugs them in. Okay. Yeah, and don't spam. I think three to six hashtags is enough. You don't need more than three to six. And I don't think it increases. I think the hashtags are very, like, incidental new likes. I don't think that, that it's particularly worth... I know people who put, like, 20, um, and I don't think it's actually drawing them that much new traffic. Okay. Is that the end? Oh, and lovely things you need to know. You need to add, add to that at Simone Heng to follow lots more vacuous information from me about celebrities. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for uh, coming to hear me speak. I, I hope you got something out of it. I understand my examples are very specific to my own field of work, but I think you can see how they project outwards. Are there any questions? Yeah. When you talked about following people back on Instagram, would you say that you had to be careful that people you followed back represented part of what the kind of like personality you were trying to represent? Yes, for business. you just followed everyone? For business, absolutely. Yeah. I think you should, for business, you should follow people that reflect yeah. um, what your brand is about. Yeah. Yeah. Because people will check it. Like, for example, um, a girlfriend of mine, when I was working at Virgin Radio, she um, went to the Justin Bieber concert with her daughter. And I was at this concert because I was working for the station and Justin Bieber, some crazy streaker person, jumped on stage and pushed Justin Bieber over. So Justin Bieber <laughs> fell over. This made like e-news in the States. Like it was crazy because they thought, oh my God, is Bieber okay? The piano fell down. Anyway, so she was the first one to kind of at Justin Bieber, saw you fall, blah, blah, blah. Justin Bieber follows her. Within an evening, she's got like 4,000 new Twitter followers because Justin Bieber followed her and his sycophants are checking out who he's following. And all the entertainment news journalists are following who he's following to see if is that a new girl that he's hooked up with. I don't, do, you, do you understand what I mean? Yeah. So I think as entrepreneurs, you should always see your businesses getting big to that level where people will care. I don't think at the beginning people are going to care so much that Savvy Ventures is following Dr. and Gabbana, but I think it's relevant to what we do. So why not start that healthy practice from the beginning? so that you don't have to be in a position later where you're culling back and getting rid of, you know, some neo-Nazis that you're following that aren't appropriate. I don't know. I'm giving you an example. Um, okay. Yes? How do you balance conflict between your personal Instagram or Twitter and your uh, company? Um, I, with Instagram, you have to log in and log out. So with Savvy Ventures, I um, log out of my Instagram and log back into my Instagram. Facebook have made it a lot easier because you can... 
I can post in my public Facebook and that it, it's a lot easier. But with Instagram, at the moment, you have to log in and log out. I, I mean more um, on the content side of things, like how do you choose which ones go to your company profile, which ones go to your personal? Oh, well, that's, um, that's easy. Every time Tanya, because it's a co-founded business, right? So every time Tanya and I do something together or I do something like this under the official umbrella of Savvy Ventures, I will make sure that I take a post. And that can be whether Tanya and I even have a brainstorming meeting. I'll get my stationery from the brainstorming meeting. I'll make a beautiful flat lay and I'll put it on there. We're not even in the picture. I'm just saying Savvy Ventures headquarters, you know, we're brewing things, blah, 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 blah. Um, I just make, I just flag myself that any time I'm going to meet her that I want to generate a post from that meeting and it's not daily. But Savvy Ventures, because it's linked to our accounts and I've got quite decent usage and so does Tanya, um, people have liked it without us really having, for me, I don't really post on there on the frequency that I do for my personal account, but the personal account goes across the blog um, as well as my radio and TV work, so if I was to separate that personal account into all the different things I did, I would not have a life, so I've, I've sandwiched it into one, but Savvy Ventures is separate, um, and I think you just have to put your business, what's your business, can I ask? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Perfectus is your business, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so obviously um, when you get together with the Perfectus boys and you and girl um, and you are planning or you're doing something for your building, your new room or the screen got installed, you know, be humorous, funny, funny screen, photo of the screen, nothing lights up my life like Perfectus. <laughs> you know, be creative. Think like a creative. Anyone here doing advertising, professional writing, anything? You are? So I take it for granted that I have that brain, but not everyone is naturally witty. So there's a group of you. Use the group of you as a resource. <laughs> Get together and go, how can we best sell this post? And the beauty of Instagram is you have that time. It's no longer, and I emphasize this, it's no longer about being instant at all. All the people have the most followings, then most certainly besides the ones that aren't famous, people who have huge followings that are not, they're online celebrities that have nothing to do with their real world occupations or their real world profile, those people have dissected the art of Instagram. They're the people you need to find and go, what are they doing that they can be a restaurant that no one knows about in Perth, but they have 300,000 followers? What are they doing? That's the be That's how I've learned. I'm like, how has this girl that's never been on a TV screen in her life got 60,000 followers. What is the bit doing? That's, you know, that's what you need to do. And that will actually reveal all of these things in a much more organic way than me lecturing it to you. Just by getting on there, like, if there's one thing I've got, who's not even on there? Who has an account and never uses it? Just get on there, like, make sure the app's always ready to go and when you've got a moment's fair, just scroll through and by osmosis, you're just gonna start working out what it is that makes it tick. Because it's for me, I'm relearning it. That's why I can explain it to you in such a fresh way. Because I'm a Facebook generation. Like I've had to relearn uh, Instagram completely. I was used to post really frequently and be like, "Why are people unfollowing me? What am I doing wrong?" They used to love that on Facebook. It's totally different. Anyone else? Yes. Sorry. Um. I so I run a magazine that's going on tour next week, and so we'll be taking like a huge amount of behind the scenes photos. But obviously, we can't have 80 of them up on the Instagram per day because that's just going to overload people. But we still want to share that content and keep people interested and engaged with what we're doing because it's a very, very short period that we're actually physically interacting with shoots and stuff like that. Okay. How would you recommend like best utilising that content to keep people engaged without overdoing it? I would go by day. So post 8 to 9pm when the day wraps so that you can choose the best from the day. Yeah. I've been on photo shoots so many times that I've gone, oh my god, they made me look so young in this picture, I'm going to post it now. And then we've done three more shots. I'm like, I look way better in the shot we just did than the one I posted 30 minutes ago. And so I, yeah, so when I go to Singapore for work trips and I'm doing cool stuff, generally now I would wait till the end of the day and then have a look at those images and just do the best of the day. Cool. Yeah. Um, now, I was just going to ask you about Instagram. So you can I sit, guys? I'm so sorry. I just, I'm a short person with the tight pass. <laughs> yeah. They change the algorithm for Facebook, but is it possible then that they could do the same for Instagram? They absolutely will do it for Instagram. They've already started with um, companies having 
100k posts. But those posts, once again, not as annoying because it's a feed. Hello, that's why there's way more Instagram users, like where there's more Instagram followers and interactive people. Because I think that on Facebook, like that ad is like right in my sidebar. Like it just won't go away and I change the page and it's still there. So they will, but I think it will be less invasive to people. I think so I think the medium might last a little, be a little bit cooler for longer. I don't know if it's just me, but Facebook doesn't really have that cool reputation that it used to have. It's yeah, because of it's become kind of this suburban mum's outlet to rant about breastfeeding. <laughs> and it, um, <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, so I think that it will, I think it will definitely happen. It's already happened in the States. So they will definitely start to advertise it. I just don't know how many impressions there, if you're not on at that time. And that's what's weird to me about Twitter. Like, Twitter, how are you making money? Because if I'm not there when you're whatever, like, it's like nada. And, and Twitter's already going for a bit of a dive, if you ask me. Like, it's not, I don't think Twitter's seen as very cool. I mean, Ashton Kutcher and um, Adam Levine used to be right behind it, and now they're like married. One's a dad. It's like that's not cool anymore. Okay. Yes. Um, how would you use Pinterest effectively to promote a business with yeah. your personal brand? Yeah. So the same thing you would follow and pin um, like-minded content to your business. So can somebody just give me a shout out of a business they think you're launching? Microbrew for craft beer. Okay, microbrew for craft beer. So you wouldn't follow, excuse me, I, I wouldn't get you to follow your competitors in the market. Like you would go to Little Creatures and like post their content. But you would find user-generated, non-business produced content. Um, like somebody's made a really funny meme out of a carton of beer. Like someone's made a dress out of beer cartons. This exists. And definitely on Pinterest because it's craft. So some and so you'll be like happy mom, you know you could be pinning that content. Then you could even screenshot that photo and make a meme, um, a funny meme out of it to use on your Instagram and other mediums. So Pinterest is a great way also to curate, similar to Tumblr, but to curate images that you can use later. So you'll be like trolling the internet. Oh my god, that's a really funny looking beer glass from Germany. Just pin it, and you can come back to it later because it will be in your pin boards but at the same time, it's still relevant content. Do you understand what I mean? So you wouldn't go to a competitor. So like Instagram, you could follow bigger businesses in the same vein as what you're doing or related to. Um, but with Pinterest, I would go to user-generated content, not competitors. Or someone who uses your product and obviously likes it and you could follow them. Yeah, absolutely. And um, like radio stations that I've worked with for many years, they love that. Like radio stations love, love, love when it love to follow people back to reward them for. Now, I'm wondering how, how specific are you into, into the medium and the type of, the, type of the content that you make? Like, do you make specific content just for Instagram, just for Twitter, just for Facebook, or yeah. do you just post the same stuff to all? No. So, oh, be, and I only started changing that because of the algorithm thing, that, mm -hmm. that people were actually de-liking my public page, because I, I was linking, they were all linked. So I unlinked it. So you can actually link your Instagram to your Facebook. So I actually unlinked it because it was causing people to unfollow. So in the general rule is the most beautiful picture goes onto Instagram. So anything that's really visually drool worthy, that's your Instagram post. Um, memes do really well on Facebook. So memes are really great for Facebook. Um, and generally with Instagram, it's more about the picture. So with Facebook, you have to have a caption. So you can have, like, the, the content that does really well for me is really emotional stuff that isn't, you, the days are gone. When social media first started, hot chicks could just post half-naked photos and it would get interactions. You know, I would go through my old modern portfolio and post photos that, because people are interested in seeing the different ways that they make you look and all that kind of stuff. That, that stuff just does not get the traction it does. But if I couple that with a really, you know, in-depth, heartfelt caption about, on this shoot, I met so-and-so photographer and he said this to me and that was the first time that I realized that you can be short and you can do anything. And like if you add stuff like that, particularly on Facebook, people love it. Inspirational stuff works well on Facebook. Yeah. So photo-driven Instagram, I think Facebook now to get engagement needs to have a little bit more depth. 
Yeah. Do you ever run into problems with uh, intellectual property when reusing like user generated content, or is it within like the user agreement licensing with like Instagram that it's free to like reuse that sort of stuff? Or? I um I went to a lecture on Instagram, and to my knowledge, you need to where possible, particularly if you're a business, like a person, I don't think they care so much, but particularly a business, um, and to grant, gain really good traffic, I think you should post um you should post hashtag regram. Yep. Capital R, little E, capital G, R, M, and then at mention the source, right. and that's going to build your network. And I, I admit I'm not that great at that, but I follow a lot of my girlfriends with huge, huge Instagram followings, and I'm like, yeah, I need to get on that. I need to be much more diligent. Yeah. And it does take time, like adding hashtags and all this without typos takes time. That's why it's not Instagram to me anymore. It's Latergram. It's take the photo now, edit eight to nine p.m. Do it properly. Or when you're at the hairdresser and you have time, or before this, I had time, so I'm going to do it properly. I will go to an event after this, and I'm telling you, you'll be crazy and there'll be people there. I will take the photos, but I won't maybe post it till tomorrow, till I have time to edit the photo and do it nicely. Yep. Yep. So it's almost like making it look like it's impromptu. Right? Absolutely. Really, yeah. Absolutely. That's the biggest thing I wish somebody told me. I have a girlfriend in Singapore who had any Facebook followers, but she's got about 9,000 Instagram followers. She's a sports journalist, but she's really into fashion. And what she does is she goes on these holidays with her husband. Her husband's quite a good hobby photographer. He takes loads of photos of her, and then I'll see the same outfit. Like, so three months ago she had posted it, and then she makes sure that she's not wearing the same outfit or the photos don't look the same next to each other. And then three months later she might post this beautiful professional photo that feels like, oh my God, where is she right now? She's posted this, what an amazing life she leads. No, she just got that stuff banked up. Yep. So just keep it banked and reuse it. And in general, it's a really good point. Don't put two photos that look the same next to each other. Don't do it. It's plenty to take photos of. So swap it up. Is that it, guys? Yep. Thank you so much for having me. Um, if you want my card, if you um, ever want to find out a little bit more, it's here. So feel free. And yeah.